you, you, you know that. And I always say, follow your passions. People come to me for a job, and so I say, sir, you have any job to fill? I said, no, I don't have any job to fill. I only fill passions. Because if you don't like what you do, you're not going to do well at it. So don't go into business thinking you want to going to do this because you hear there's a lot of money in there. If you don't like the thing, you are not going to be passionate because it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. You have to keep thinking how you're going to improve. The road to success is always on a construction. So every business must have a corporate mission statement and a country vision statement. Where do you see the country in which you live going? If, if you're in the housing business, is it that Jamaica has 100% home ownership? If you are in the food business, is it that nobody should go hungry in Jamaica? But you've got to have an interest in where your country is going. Because if your country is going nowhere, sooner or later, your business will be going nowhere. So I, I read a, an article um, a few days ago on the internet, and I, I looked it up yesterday, and it was a South African investment advisor who said that countries are no longer going to, uh, businesses are no longer going to chase down the lowest cost country. It's not like, boy, cheap labor is in Pakistan or in, in um, India, and we're going to invest there. What countries are looking at, companies are looking at, is the big picture of the country. They're looking for longer term stability because what they're finding is if you invest for just one aspect of the picture and you, you have problems in that country, civil unrest, riots and things, it so distorts the business, it so can throw you out, you can lose, you can lose contracts, you, you can lose um, your lifeline that they, they've got, they're taking a bigger picture. So I hope this is not going to be sort of bad for Jamaica, but people are going to look at our stability. And therefore, we need to invest in national priorities. What are our national priorities? They say that, um, one, we have to take control of our destiny. We're all collectively responsible for where Jamaica is, because most of us are not speaking up. We've, we hear very little from our leaders about where is the direction our country needs to go. Some of them are compromised. I, I saw a headline in the paper the other day that NDX was better than a 25% haircut. And I really had to wonder for who? Because I then read that four or five of our financial institutions have more than, is it about 50% of the GOJ or government debt? And what is really happening is when these discussions come around, I call it horse trading because they are trying to stave off a haircut which is going to stave off a, a, a default because it's going to cost them a lot more. But they've decided to take a few points less on the interest rate which doesn't help the most businesses because if you remember JDX, what happened? Those of you who had money, the interest rate went down immediately. But did your bank loan? No. I kept hearing, if, if you're like me, oh, we have these commitments and things. So what it did, it allowed those banks to actually make a higher spread during that period. So point is that the, the, the situation we're in now, we could stand here in another 10 years and Jamaica is going to be in, in a similar position. We, are we going to batter, batter along? Is that the future of Jamaica? Each country has its, its sort of place. Jamaica is not the hardest working. We're, we're, we're not a Barbados. Or, um, and th some people thank the Lord for that because they believe that um, there needs to be a high, high enough level of crime. Sorry, Anya. But I will never own a house on Long Mountain if Jamaica's crime goes down. I remember seeing a play that Trevor Rowan put on in the 80s. And there were some gunmen looking at a screen with real estate prices, sort of like what Anya had up here. And one of the gunmen was about to sit down, and they were commenting, boy, damn house expensive, not 25 million, how am I going to earn a, a buy a house like that? And as he sat down, the M16 went off. Duh, 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 duh. And sure enough, the screen flashed, and the house prices went down. <laughs> and I said, but wait. 
but wait. And, and him fire a couple more shots. Do, 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 do. And the price drop again. And it's more like it. And if we don't realize there are forces within this country that actually believe that there needs to be a certain level of crime with, to keep things affordable for us. Because me now go on, me never go buy no house up in Beverly Hills if, if there is no crime. Because look how expensive the houses are in Barbados. Okay? So once we know what is here, we've all got to work together, each and every one of us, to see what are the national priorities of Jamaica. I suggest to you that crime is, is probably should be, it's our national scar, as they refer to these blotches. Yeah. Jamaica is a great country, Jamaica has goodwill out there, but right now we're suffering as you see it playing out in the US Senate with, with the crime stories. And what does it mean? All the goodwill of Mr. Bolt, Yes, some of it is being rubbed off, rubbed off because of some of the scammers out there and the fact that uh, if, as they say, they didn't, we didn't act strong enough. So let's all hope we can determine our national priorities and work to make Jamaica a better place. I'll close with just three little tips of what I found I needed to do as a CEO. Someone said to me, what do you do if I had to give a, wa a my job talk? What do you really do every day? And I said, Isai, you one of them big men, you just sit back there and collect some money from the guests at Spanish court, or you have this business and you, 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 know, you make your money that way. I said, no, here's what I do every day. It's called the three E's, the four F's, and the one H. The three E's. I have to follow up everybody every day about everything. That's just a reality. <laughs> if you think you can tell somebody, well, clean, clean that room today and you know, come back tomorrow and you see them, they, they'll be cleaning that room, I, I haven't really found that yet. You have to be on, on top of everything. The four Fs, Jamaica is a very special place. The four Fs is probably the most important thing I can tell you. It goes to working with everybody from your staff, your team members, your suppliers, your contractors. It's sort of one extended family. And it, the four F's are these. Father and mother, no offense to the ladies. Father, friend. Fair, but firm. Because if you're not firm, they're gonna walk all over you. If you're not fair, they're gonna spite you and sabotage you. If you truly are not a friend to them, they are not going to work and support, work, work and support the organization. And as a father or mother, a lot of persons out there miss that nurturing. And secondly, as some of us know, it doesn't hurt to have two people who genuinely are concerned about you. The one H, this is a country that it's hard to compete with the excitement that Jamaica provides. Jamaica is a very exciting place. Would you all agree? Yeah. How if you come to a, a, a work or a job and the place is just a dead draws or nothing is going on, <laughs> right? How are you going to be inspired? As I say, as I say that to, the, to my people, we're either hot or we're not. We've we either got to keep it that way to make it exciting. And how do we do it? You have to remember your one H. And this applies again to not just your staff, your team members, your suppliers, your contractors. We've got to make it exciting for them. As I tell, when the elevator broke down at Spanish Court, if why them want, don't want to come into the Pegasus um, over Spanish Court, what is going to make them want to come to Spanish Court? We've got to make it exciting when they come there. And that one H is, you've got to use your imagination. <laughs> Chris, thank you very, very, very much. I think our um, motivational speaker really has his job stacked up for him this evening um, after your presentation. Was was amazing, especially those those tips at the end. Um, we know everybody does need to focus, refocus. Um, you know, we do have coffee, pastries, sandwiches. Uh, we want to keep moving though. And um, but please, you know, go, go and go and grab some. Um, we do have our session two that we're starting. Again, we want to tell everybody. Thank you. Um, before we do start the next, next session, though, we did want to give everybody the opportunity to ask any questions quickly. Um, are there any quick questions for the panel? 
And that's all? All right. Actually, Miss Co Mrs. Coalition. Uh, Miss Gillian? Or Chris Crystal? <coughs> yeah. Over here. Uh, Mr. Issel? Dawn. Here. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm still not clear on. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see a very entertaining but useful presentation. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. But I'm still not clear on the point you're making about the crime. I, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Right. Yeah. Well, I think s the, 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 the impact of crime, as we've heard, <coughs> like in a business, what, what security is, crime for each and every was going to and from. Um, it's something that we really need to tackle seriously in all areas. The, the, there's a feeling that um, I think when the, the Americans think the problem with a lot of scammers began mm -hmm. and when we began to do something about it, whether it's, I don't know the three sides to the story, but there's obviously a feeling that we didn't act you know, strong enough. But not only about that, all aspects of crime. Um, I think that it's taking a heavy toll on our society. It and is. take, for example, practical solutions. I think they said they might be doing it now, but how, how long ago have GPS devices been around or tracking that we could have put in police cars? Mm -hmm. Because with not, not accusing anybody of anything, but you ever pass a police car and wonder what what, where it was going, mm -hmm. uh, what, what, it, what mission it was really on, mm -hmm. and, and um, I, I, I think there's hope for Jamaica, I'll tell you why. Um, this morning I was on a, at a canteen, mm -hmm. and the lady that runs the canteen said to me, look at those three police, they've been in here all morning, what, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. And it's only until the man in the street begins to pressure the government as to what are what is the money that we're spending and what are we getting for it nobody wants to see anybody out of a job but i believe that there is such a great amount of waste mm -hmm. in our public sector that we could do the same job we're doing for a lot less i don't know i just thought i heard you um, saying that maybe crime is what made us more interesting that's the oh. no, that no, no, not, no, 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 no. The 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 story with the lady with Grenada. She just wanted to come back to Jamaica because she found it a more exciting place to live. But it had nothing to do with crime. The parents were concerned about her safety in Jamaica. Before the next question, I'm just going to ask that we keep keep the the conversation as low as we can while we go through this quick. Q&A, we want to move to the next session as quickly as possible. So just a reminder, I'm asking you to keep the, the personal conversations as low as possible so we can still hear the questions <coughs> and the speaker. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Brennan. Yep. Thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sorry I was late, but I have a short question. How do you swim against the tide? Who's, who's your question? Who's your question for, Mr. Brennan? The good the gentleman who spoke okay. on the left. Okay. How do you swim against the tide? I say this to say... Swim against the tide. Swim against tide. Oh. If you're an upstanding organization and you're in an industry to which there's no level playing field, it's very difficult, but you do have a solution how you get around that. There are so many unlevel playing fields in Jamaica. W one of the things that I find is that we need to try and a lot of us will sit and complain or, or complain to one another. That is not really helping us. Um, the, the Americans have it down in, um, in that they will write to their senator or congressman or take actions. I think that we need to begin to learn how to, how to really make our voices heard um, on, on issues that are important to us, um, whether it's writing, calling, um, you know, trying to put together action groups, lobby groups, depending on um, w what the particular issue is. But, but um, 
we need to be more proactive in trying to do something rather than just uh, complaining. Right. Thank you. Um, so, Shil, you have a question? Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I must thank all the presenters for their excellent presentations. I have two points for Mr. Clark. One is he mentioned that South Africa, did, South of Korea did not choose a winner. In fact, they did choose a winner. And the, ch win the choice was, they said we are going to be the most technologically advanced country in the world. And they put billions of dollars into that project. I forget the name, it was nicknamed something. And they are in fact reaping the benefits of it, so much so that Samsung has overtaken so many big Japanese companies like Sony and Panasonic and so on. Uh, number two, Mr. Clark, you complained about the Jamaican skilled people leaving Jamaica, but have you ever done a model to see that if all of them did not leave, <coughs> what would have happened to the Jamaica? Will you get the $1 billion inflows that you are getting every year in the remittances? What will be the state of remittance? What will be the state of unemployment? And so on. So I think probably the migration of the skilled manpower will be the one thing which will save Jamaica in the years to come. One more question for Anya her beautiful presentation. You talk about the real estate rising and so on. Very good. How much has it risen in US dollar terms? If an apartment was $200,000 Jamaican, at the, when the exchange rate was 2 to 1, now if it is 10 million, you will say it has risen a lot. But actually it is the same at 100 to 1. Mr. Clark, can go first. All right. What's his name? Sir? Mr. Shale. Um, the first point is about the assistance of the South Korean government to industries. Is that correct? What is it? No. What the South Korean government did was to create infrastructure within which companies that were involved in production and exporting would be able to operate in a competitive manner. Without a, an industrial infrastructure, a country will not be able to function competitively. And that is the kind of broad foundational support that governments uh, give to their producers in order for them, whatever they, they do, it doesn't have to be industry A versus industry B. It just has to be industry that is producing. The second point is regarding remittances. Um, I did a, an article once, and the research that I did suggested that based on the income that people in the category of those who have emigrated earn. It is only a small fraction of that income that comes back, comes back. And a small fraction in relation to the value that they are producing for the economy in which, to which they have emigrated. Now remember, the value of a human being is not the small change that he takes out of his pocket as charity or support or whatever. The real value is his productive potential. So when someone leaves Jamaica, what you have lost is productive potential. And that productive potential is being enjoyed by another country, the value of which the person who earns the income is able to send back a small portion to Jamaica. So thank God for those people who send money back to Jamaica. But the fact is that 
had we created an economic environment that would have made it possible for that person to create that productive effort here, the country would be a lot better off than the small change that he sends back to Jamaica. Um, Sashil, thank you for that question, and I have to concede that I don't have the answer, but I'm going to get back to you. I'm not a Damien King, I don't have the figures or the graphs or the percentages, so I cannot give you an exact figure, but I'll get back to you. Is that okay? Thanks. And, and so, Shil, one of the best things is that you, you have after the session to, to mingle with Anya and you can pick her brain as well.